started reading the Quran. I read it completely. It was unbelievable. Everything started to fall in place. Everything made sense. I took the Quran and now I could say to my Bible, I know now it all works together. Now I understand. Because of the Quran, I was able to understand my Bible. And I say, oh, this is great. God is making me a good Christian. He's going to teach me through the Quran. Well, as I kept reading and kept reading, I kept reading the Quran more because it made more sense. It was easier. It was simpler. It appealed more to my heart, to my intellect, to my mind. And my Bible, I started to put it down more. And I started to read the Quran. I decide, I want to pray like them. They do prayer. When I was Christian, I just pray. Just kneel my head and I pray. But something appealed to me. When these people get down on their knees and start to bow and prostrate themselves before the Almighty God, the Creator of the universe. Now you see how the religion works. You see how our religion is so much simpler, how it's so beautiful, how it appeals to the end. They will never even try to read the Quran. You know why? Because the media is filling their heads with lies about it. They think these lies are part of Quran, but it isn't. It is just media lying to you. Want me to explode? Yes! That's what I've been waiting for! Um... Okay, I'll try. Hello, <laughs> Akbar! There are a lot of people who want you to stay away from God, who are spreading lies about his last revelation, his last message to us. I am sure you heard a lot of these lies already. If you really care about the truth, you shouldn't learn about Catholics, for example, from a Protestant. You shouldn't learn about Judaism from the Pope, right? And also, you shouldn't learn about Islam from an atheist who devoted his whole life spreading lies about Quran. And you just take his word for it without even reading yourself. It's like asking medical advice from an accountant. With all respect to accountants, but they will absolutely give you the wrong medical advice. You went to the wrong person to get very important information. They will tell you Islam is worshipping another god called Allah, while Allah is simply the Arabic translation of the word God. For example, Deus is the Spanish word for God. It's just a translation. It's not another god. The word Allah itself is used in the Arabic version of the King James Bible. Arabic Christians are referring to God as Allah. It's not the Muslim God, it is the Arabic word for God. That's it even for the Christians. They will tell you Islam is violent and unfair and filled with hatred and discrimination. They would even use the T word. All of these are lies. Did you read the Quran yourself or are you getting medical advice from the accountant? They will tell you Quran is oppressive to women while Islam gave women their rights more than 1000 years before Europe even thought about it. They will try to mix evil governments of some countries nowadays with the teachings of Islam to tell you, see, this is Islam, while it isn't. These evil people are the exact opposite of what Islam really is. The media is trying to tell you that they represent Islam, but they are literally the opposite. If you really care about the truth, you should get the truth from the Quran itself and from the authentic books, not from Islamophobes. Only after you read the true scripture, you can judge yourself. And before you ask, there is no country in the world right now that represents the teachings of God in the Quran. What you see now is them not following the Quran or making up their own rules. Judge the book, don't judge the people. Again, judge the book, don't judge the people. Jesus in the Bible says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear now. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And God says in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 3, Today I have completed and perfected your religion for you. Can't you see any link between the two verses? The spirit of truth was Muhammad and he came to complete the mission of Jesus. At least read it once before you choose what to believe. Yes, I know, priest will tell you, no, Jesus was referring to the Holy Spirit. But that is absolutely wrong. Jesus said, the advocate, the spirit of truth, will not come until I go away. And the Holy Spirit was there. So it's not the Holy Spirit. And also in the same John, it says, believe not every spirit, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So John himself is saying that spirit is equal prophet. So a true spirit is a true prophet, and a false spirit is a false prophet. When Jesus is saying that this prophet will not come until I go away first. So it's impossible to be the Holy Spirit. 
Quran is the only well-preserved word of God, unchanged word by word from the Prophet's mouth to your ears. Not even one letter was changed. While until now, we don't even know who the authors of the Gospels are. If you don't know, Gospel of John was not written by John, Gospel of Matthew was not written by Matthew, and so on. It's not called Gospel of Matthew because he is the author, no. It is the Gospel according to Matthew, but the author himself is unknown. And you still refuse to read the Quran one time, and you base your whole life and your whole faith on lies that you get from the media. Since when do you believe anything you hear in the media without any doubt? Read yourself. When you read it yourself, you will find the truth. And if you decide to give it a try, we can assign an Arabic speaker to read it with you for free, translate every verse, and help you grasp the full meaning of every chapter, while answering all of your questions from authentic sources, not from random websites or YouTube videos. Contact us using Facebook or Discord, and we can schedule a regular online meeting with you. If after you read it you don't like it, then no harm no foul. Just go back to believing whatever you used to believe. At least you will have read God's message to you and understood why are you created and what is your purpose in life. It's very, very interesting. I mean, if you look into the hate against Islam, it comes oftentimes from so-called Christian apologetics, right? From certain evangelicals that want to speak bad about Islam and want to promote, obviously, Christianity. And that is totally understandable. There's nothing wrong per se with that. Even though if you look deeper into it, there might be, but you understand my case. So it's team versus team, and the Christians want to debunk Islam, blah, 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 and don't read it. And you have many, many claims, right? Book of the Devil, channeled book, and whatnot. But in many instances, those people haven't even read the Quran. So it's quite interesting. And then when you start reading it, I can only speak about myself, of course, it just reaffirms what you believe anyways. It just reaffirms, yeah, I believe in one God. Duh. That's what it is. That's what is called the fitra within Islam, right? You just know, of course, yes, this sounds right. But then when it starts dismantling all of those concepts, saints, right? Church fathers, and it just goes away. Mother of God, that goes away. Jesus, son of God, that kind of breaks down. Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in one God, surrounding the essence of God, and then that breaks away. And then you just have God, right? This pureness of monotheism, it clears up the mind as well. Because before that, man, you don't really know how to pray. And you think you have to pray to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now to Jesus again, Jesus, 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 forgive me. And then you see, in the Orthodox Church, for example, you have those icons and they symbolize certain saints again. And then you ask those saints to speak to God for you. Why? Why all of it, right? And so the Quran is just this ah fresh breeze, this clarification where you just realize, okay, I didn't have to do any of that, ultimately. <clears throat> At first it can feel like a guilt trip almost, because you think to yourself, ooh, I'm losing my religion, right? So this is what I used to do, this is wrong to not do. But at the same time, once that mental construct is removed, you think to yourself, why would I even do that in the first place? It seems like you're making things complicated for the sake of being complicated. In Germany we say, why easy if you can make it complicated, right? It's counterintuitive out of the sun. And the further you look into it, I don't know where you are at right now, but the further I looked into it, then you realize, hmm, it's very, very interesting because Christianity itself is a concept, is a religion. It's true. It is a religion. It is a dogma-based religion. Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism. It is essentially something that cannot potentially be the religion of Jesus. It's absolutely impossible. And we know that, even historically. Jesus wasn't calling himself a Christian. That would be counterintuitive, doesn't make sense. So the followers of Christ, so to speak, became the Christians. Judaism, with their prophets, Abraham, Moses, they weren't Jews in that classical sense, right, either. Then you look into Rabbinic Judaism, Talmudic Judaism, etc., etc., and you see how that has been twisted and turned and where it ended up now. So ultimately, 
the question really becomes then what that religion is, the religion of the prophets. And Islam makes that very, very strong claim that it simply is submitting yourself to God. And there's literally nothing else. And that for me, yet again, makes perfect sense. And that for me is the message of the Quran.